Page 118, Theme and Variations on the D Minor Scale. Let's take a look at this. It's in the title, Theme and Variations. Remember, a theme is also a melody. Same difference, a theme and a melody. A theme it actually could be part of a melody, but a, a theme and a melody, generally theme and variations, it's a form of music. Like we had other ABA and a, AB form and all this. Okay, the, a theme and variations is where you're given the melody, the theme, and then they do variations on it. So it would be A, B, C, D, E. Each variation is a different section. And you can see on page 119, they have variations one and two labeled for you. And there's a double bar between them. Okay. We're just using the D minor scale and the, the primary chords, pretty much. Now let's look it over. It's two pages long. Trouble and bass clef, one flat in the key signature. We already know it's in D minor. It's in the title. So go ahead and be doing the scales for F major and D minor. And go ahead and do the arpeggios for those also, at least one octave. And three, four time. Take it one hand at a time just, just to make sure we're okay. The right hand is just a scale. There, okay. And the measure 10, it's here. Don't forget the B flat, it's in the key signature. And then it's one and two and. One and two. And then here. Basically a scale, it's just we took a detour, is all. That's the theme. The variation one, the melody is actually going to be the same because a variation you can change the melody a little bit or you can change the accompaniment or both, whichever. Here they're changing the accompaniment, so you're just doing a scale. And then for the second variation, where you're doing the scale again. Isn't this sweet? Okay, left hand, let's see what we're doing. We got the primary chords, block chords, one chord. 5 7 chord, 1 chord. They put the chord names above the staff. They can do that if there's a guitar player around who wants to play along with a duet. Go with it. That's fine. They can improvise on those. But we, we do some, and the measure 6 is the 4 chord. You can do up here or here, however you want to pronounce it or play it is up to you. Then measure 7. You think, whoa, what's this? Well, it's a 5-7 chord, believe it or not. See, in measure 2, we had this. But if you remember, the 5-7 chord has four notes. All of them. We're using this or this. Most of the time we use that. But here, it's this. It's 5-7 chord. And then measure 9 is broken. If you don't want to do that, you do that. I don't know how big your hands are. Variation one, it's a broken chord and a noom chuck chuck goom. Same chord, big deal. And then variation two, another pattern for broken chords is eighth notes. I'm just rotating here and I'm lowering which finger I want the weight to be on. See, we're playing the same chords here. So then I'll put the hands together and it's one. First variation is and this fun. Okay. Second variation. Then we got different variations. I mean, some composers when they did very, they could they could have uh, twenty or more variations. Just it just goes on and on and on and on sometimes. And some of the variations are so weird. You think, how is that a variation of the theme? It doesn't sound like it at all. They get, in my opinion, a little carried away sometimes, but that's what they do. Now, once I have the notes and rhythms okay, I get rid of the hesitations. Then I'll put in the articulation. We have staccatos. I'm flexing at the wrists or short staccatos. Measure nine, you get an accent, both hands. And that's not staccato. Accent. Variation one is the um chuck chuck. But, and the variation two, connect it. It's all together. There's nothing marked but connect it. Yeah. Then 
the dynamics. It applies to the melody, which is the right hand. Now you have a little thing up there about playing one hand heavier than the other and arm weight. I'm just saying weight. Where the, where the weight is, a, a, a personal thing. Sometimes I feel like it's the hand that's heavy, it's the arm that's heavy. Sometimes I get my back into it. The point is it's weight, it's controlled. The louder I play, the more weight I'm using because I use a controlled weight to play this. So this is moderately saw, MP, mezzo piano, whatever you think soft, and then a measure four, you got the, the hairpin, you're gonna go up. It doesn't say how loud to go up. At measure nine, you get an F, forte. So I'm guessing uh, measure seven, you're somewhere around between moderately loud and loud. You're pretty close to loud up there. So you, you're moderately soft at measure four, a little louder, a little louder, a little louder. And then measure nine, F with the accent actually makes that note very loud. Oh, no, wait, let the wrist collapse a little bit. So we just kind of go, going up to loud, and measure 10, we're loud here, heavy. And then measure 12, you come back down, and you come down soft. The soft will happen by itself. If so if you're moderately soft at measure 13, by measure 14 you should be soft because it'll die away on its own. The left hand gets, gets softer with each of those. Now the left hand's in the background this whole time, but you can still get a little louder and softer in the left hand. You just got to keep it in the background. Now variation one is basically the same thing. You have the moderately loud, moderately soft, and you're, very, and you're soft and they say very soft. Just make it in the background somewhere. Measure five, you get the hairpin, you go moderately loud. So measure five, you're starting this moderately soft now. A little louder, a little louder. Here, this, you can get a little louder, but keep it in the background. And then Mary is in two, back down, you're gonna do it again. And measure five again, you're moderately soft here. A little louder. That's sort of the dynamics. The idea is you got a little crescendo toward the end of these and you need to feel that crescendo. You gotta make it last that long, otherwise you'll get loud within a couple of beats and that's too soon. Speed wise, well, it depends. On a theme of variation, different variations can be different speeds. They didn't change the speed, so it's gonna be the same speed throughout. Whatever you think it is, somewhere in the middle. It's not slow, it's not fast, it's kind of walking somewhere, okay. About where I've been playing, I think. Now they've added pedal in a few places. I don't know that I really like the idea of adding pedal the way they've done it. Now a little bit about form and what they're trying to do here. There are musical terms to tell you what they're trying to do, but you haven't learned them yet, so they're trying to explain it in English. We have the sections. You have the theme is one section, variation is a section, another variation, another section. There's three sections, A, B, C. And it would have been a lot easier if they had just printed out the music, but they didn't. Okay. Look at the end of the first variation. Underneath, you see the instructions. Complete variation one yeah, by playing measures 9 through 14. Now, if you look over 9 through 14, it's the last two lines on page 118. So variation one is actually four lines long. And that makes sense. If the theme's going to be four lines long, the variation could be four lines long. Then in variation two at the bottom, they say complete variation two by completing measures nine through 14. So again, variation two is four lines long. You, and you just keep going by, keep a steady beat as you're doing this. Yeah, good luck trying to figure all that out, but that's what they want you to do. So when you finish variation one, then you go over and you do measures nine through 14. And when you finish ver uh, measure 14, you jump to vari variation two. And hopefully you can keep track of where you are and where you're going. Good luck. There is a retardando at the end. They're at the bottom of page 118. On measures 13 and 14, where you're slowing down. Here. If you want to do that, that's fine. You'd probably do it at the end of all the variations too. Now they've added pedal on here and typically I would say, oh, I don't really want pedal. What's it doing here? But because they're using it in measure nine, and it is kind of important there, then I guess we better add the pedal. 
it's going to be overlapping pedal and only pedal it where they're telling you to. We don't want to pedal anything else. So on measure eight, that's where it's used. I'm going to push it down right after I play the note. And I'm going to overlap it. For when I play measure nine, I'll change it after I play the notes. And I'll, I'll lift it up after I play the notes in measure 10. Here. That's how we're doing that. At the end, I measure one, it's at the bottom of page 118. Measure 14, I guess. Here, push the notes down for the right, push the note, push the pedal down right after you play the left hand. And then lift them together so you get a little silence before you go on, because it's a new variation or whatever. Same thing at the end of variation one. You get pedal at the end. Well, you're going to go back to measure nine, and when you do, you overlap the pedal. same thing at the end of the second variation you do the pedal that way too if we weren't using the pedal on measure nine to give us some full overtones and connect it and I would say leave the pedal out but they're doing that so that's what we're going to do I'm not going to do the pedal when we do the play with me though Let's play this together slowly and check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do louds and softs. I'll do the staccatos and stuff. And we are going to do the jumping around like they're saying to do. So I'll give us three counts. One, ready, go. Variation two. 